Look, I'm just gonna be real. I can't be bothered doing one of those hype intros. So let's just check out what has actually changed with Cursor 2.0. First thing you will notice is the UI has changed. Cursor has really doubled down on this whole chat interface. In case you don't like this, you can go back to the old editor version. Just go to the top left-hand corner and you get the cursor that you know and love, the one that has been old faithful, that has got us through thick and thin. We can go back to this cursor. But if not, check out this new agents tab. Cursor's really doubled down with agents in the sense that more people are speaking into LLMs or uh, AI chats and getting out output and code. Uh, even our developers, I know in our team, they use cursor, they use Claude in maybe slightly different ways than just vibe coding, but they are using it in a conversational way and then reviewing their files. And what I like about this update is it actually makes reviewing a lot easier. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice is that cursor one is selected. And Cursor 1 is actually Cursor's first agentic coding model. So 200K token context window, which is wild. It's so cool that Cursor has got in this race, in my opinion, because Cursor is obviously a big player and in the space of OpenAI and Anthropic and all the others. But for me, more competition among these players means the better the models are gonna get and the cheaper, because I don't know about you guys, I'm spending way too much money on these models. So it is nice if it gets cheaper and hopefully Cursor going out and creating this composer model is gonna help do that as well. In terms of the benchmarking for these models, I hate this chart, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why they put in best frontier and fast frontier and things like this. I don't know why they didn't just use the actual names of the LLMs or the coding models that they're comparing it to. Like Best Frontier, I assume, is called Sonnet, and Fast Frontier, I assume, is Grok, but I don't know. But what this is saying is essentially, in terms of intelligence, it is relatively close to the Best Frontier model, and it is very fast compared to all other models. I don't really like to look too much into this or LM Arena to get an actual understanding of how the model performs. The best way to understand is to actually use the models. So let's go ahead and actually do that. I am going to, I'm gonna go back into here. I'm gonna go open up a terminal. You can open up a terminal in here. It's gonna pop up really small though at the start. I'm just gonna go npm run dev and spin up our web app. This web app, we've been working on it for the last few projects. We have installed an MCP to Superbase. So we have Superbase connected into here. Um, we have a share feature into here. Uh, this is actually the previous version. So we don't have likes in here yet, but We've done a lot in these project series. If you want to check out the projects, check it out in the link down below or the videos that pop up on screen now, but you'll get a full step-by-step -step guide and it's all free. There's This app is looking pretty cool. It's like a Spotify, but there's a few things I don't like. I mean, I don't like this no API mode that's flashing. That's kind of redundant. I don't really like the footer. Uh, so let's just go ahead and make some of those changes. Like let's test this out. I can go ahead and close this terminal now. And in here, I can just say, I want you to change the no API mode button that's flashing in the top right hand corner. I don't really like that. Um, so let's go ahead and change that. So I can just run this as I normally would. And in here, it's gonna start generating. Uh, it's gonna read through the files. It's gonna make some changes. And well, that was pretty quick. Uh, Composer is from what I've tested so far is a really quick model. Now, something I really like about this Cursor 2.0 update is this review button interface here where you can see all the changes that it made. So in this case here, I can go ahead and look at the app and it hasn't changed anything, right? All right, this is actually perfect. So in this case right now, what I would do is I would inspect element on this component. I would then use my dev tools um, to check out what is this div called and I'd click on that. I'd copy paste this in here. I'd take this into the chat and I'd go ahead and try and resolve the errors like that. Additionally, if I also have errors in here, and right now there's no errors, but if I did have errors and I was seeing something wrong in the console log, I'd use the dev tools, I'd copy paste the errors, I'd take screenshots of the tabs, and I'd put it all into cursor. Now that is one way to do it. I think this way is a lot better and it's something new that they have just introduced into cursor 2.0. Actually just go ahead and click this connected to internal browser button and we can open up the browser tab here. We could also use Google Chrome, but I'm just gonna use this browser tab because I think it's really, really cool. And we have our own browser tab inside of Cursor. And this acts as a normal browser here, so you can just type in whatever you want. But here I have our local host in here. The cool thing about this 
is that I can actually go ahead and select element as I did with my dev tools before. I could select anything on this page and it gets added as context. So for us, we want to select this div, please remove this component completely. And then I can run this and it's actually going to go ahead and do that. Now, as well as that, oh, wow, that was really, really fast. So you can see it's made the change here. So if I go back to this website, there is no API mode button flashing anymore. And it's super, super simple. I really like this feature. Additionally with this, you can also go to dev tools in here. I can select dev tools and we can go to our console logs or our different elements in here as well, if you prefer to do it this way. But it means that cursor gets direct access within itself uh, to your dev tools, to your console logs, everything. So if you have errors, it will look at the dev tool itself and then correct it straight away. Additionally in here, you can go to this browser menu here and you can take a screenshot. So it'll take a screenshot of what's on screen right at that current time, or you can take a screenshot of the entire page load and add it as context. These are all very useful tools and I really like this whole browser interface here as well. So if I'm happy with the changes, I can click that review button, check over the files. If, it, if I'm all happy with this, I can go keep all and make those changes and it's gonna be all sweet to go. Now I can go ahead and close these and I can also spin up a new agent. And one of the other features that we have got is this multiple agent workflow. So if we go into this switch model, we can actually choose multiple models in here. So you can select Composer or Sonnet or Codex, or whatever different models you wanna compare. And we can actually run a Git work tree. When you are working with multiple branches and features at the same time, it can be difficult to stash and commit all the stuff in the right order. And you may have a lot of merge conflicts, but having Git work trees does make this a bit easier. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Now let's take a look at the web app here. At the moment, all the music is in latest hits, but maybe we we'll wanna have different genres of music. So we can go ahead and make that a uh, command here. I want to create different genres for the music. So instead of just having the latest hits, I wanna have music breaking down, broken down by category or genre. So typically you can do the same thing as normal. You can plan, you can ask. Um, for this sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and compare the three different models. And as we're doing this, I wanna show you what's gonna happen. So right now, Composer is going ahead. It's reading through all the files. <laughs> Damn, Composer is fast. It's going through all the to-dos already and it's going ahead. Wow, it's already adding code as well, which is pretty wild. Codex is definitely still gonna be planning. This is a slow model, but usually it does pretty good on front-end UI. And Haiku, Haiku is also planning its next moves. Um, but these three are working simultaneously in different work trees right now, which is pretty cool. So sometimes it may need you to run certain commands so you can go through uh, and do that. But you will see in the left-hand corner, there is an in progress command here. And uh, you can go through and flick through the different modes here to see where each one is up to. I can't lie, this is pretty wild. The composer has finished before uh, Haiku and Codex have even started their plan. So I don't know if there's a glitch going on right now, but that was pretty wild in terms of speed. So while the others are doing their thing, let's just continue on here. The way that you actually go ahead and review these different changes and compare which one you actually like best, and this applies the changes to the working branch. So now I can go ahead and go back to the browser here and we'll see the changes that were made here by Composer. Honestly, not bad. I probably wouldn't wanna have categories with, I mean, this one doesn't even have a song there, so that's not very good. Um, and some of them, I think this is mainly due to the API though. Some of them don't have a title or a uh, album cover. It stayed on theme, it's pretty similar styling. Not bad at all. Let's say something else I wanna change is the footer here. I don't like that it's a different color. I want it to be the same color as the background, especially if I flick through dark mode or light mode. So I want that to be the same color. I also want these symbols here to be a bit bigger. So we could go back through, wow, Codex and Haiku. I'm definitely messing up. I'm gonna undo these changes and then I'm going to just copy this, spin up a new agent. So I'm gonna go into model again and use multiple models. We use the same ones. Um, if you wanted to, you could also run multiple of the same type of model as well. Uh, I've seen people do this. In my opinion, this is gonna be a very expensive use case. Like people, if you're gonna be doing this, you are gonna be spending more money and it's probably why a lot of these platforms are doing this, but if you are, if you do have the credits to spend or you are willing to spend it, then it can be very, very effective. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try that command again. I want you to create different genres for the music on the homepage. I also want you to make sure that 
depending on the breakpoint, it works as well on mobile or laptop, um, whatever breakpoint the user may be on. Cool, so I'll press enter here. Hopefully this time the other two models work. That's quite weird. Um, I was using this earlier today and it was working, but now you can see that uh, Codex is actually going and exploring files. So this is definitely working now, but Composer again is the fastest by far, which we've seen before. Cool thing is, as these agents are doing things, we can also go ahead and make changes as well. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna make these changes about the footer. So I'm gonna say, I want you to change the footer to match the color of the uh, light mode or dark mode, depending on which one is selected. And I also want you to uh, increase the size of the component that I'm gonna select. So now I can go ahead and use the select element tool. I'm gonna click that and it's gonna give it context. And now I can also be running another agent uh, as these other ones are running as well. That's perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. I can go ahead and keep those. Um, but here we can see that Haiku is almost finished. Compose is definitely done. So we can apply these changes. Let's go have a look at what Composer did this time. I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty similar, pretty much the same. Let's have a look at Haiku, it's almost done here. So let's see what Haiku's looking like. We can un undo those there. We'll see if any one of them uses a different style. I assume all three of them are gonna be pretty simple. Um, this is quite a simple feature to build, but let's say it was something a bit more complicated. I'd like to see how the models perform, but I just wanted to give you an idea about how you could use these multiple agents to, to test the different use cases here. As always, Codex is taking its sweet time. Codex is always being, gonna be taking a while. Uh, it is a slow model, but hopefully it has some pretty good output. Um, Haiku is almost there. I also wanna show you in the editor, if you like this view better, you can still run the browser within here. Uh, it's just the same way through the chat interface on the right hand side here. You can connect to browser and spin up a new tab uh, and use the, the browser element within here as well, which I really, really like. So now Haiku is done and ChatGPT has just got its to-dos now. So I'm gonna apply all changes from Haiku and check out what this actually is looking like. So right here, you can see Haiku. I don't really like that. I mean, that's not nice that you can't even scroll to the actual song, one genre songs here. That's to do with the API. I guess it did what it was told to do, but this is a pretty simple feature. So we're not gonna see too much difference in the coding models. I could also get Haiku to change it completely. I want to have a selection filter or like bubbles of the different genres instead of having them all listed out on the page. So I could change it up. I could run this as an agent within itself, which is really, really cool. By the time this video releases, because Codex is taking so long, it's gonna be Cursor 3.0. Isn't it crazy how little patience we all have now? Tools are getting faster and faster, and yet I'm getting more and more impatient. Oh my goodness, after 35 minutes, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was, like, it was like five minutes. Codex is done, so we can go apply all, check out these changes, what are we looking like? Codex also has not done a great job. I actually don't think it's sorted it out. Obviously I can add more instructions in Codex and the other models would have gotten it right. But I thought, to be honest, these models would understand that if half a tile is off the page, then that's not great UI. I didn't prompt it very well. I wasn't uh, exactly like optimizing this for the best possible prompt. So I understand why this didn't have a great output. Oh, this is quite interesting. So in this case, uh, I forgot to undo the changes that I made from Codex. Now, I could merge these manually and resolve all the conflicts, uh, and there's gonna be merge conflicts potentially that happen, or I could just stash the changes that I made locally and then I could apply them later. In this case, I don't really care about the Codex one, so I'm just gonna stash the changes and let's check out what Haiku does. Oh yes, okay, this is great as well. I wanna show you guys how to troubleshoot within uh, Cursor 2.0 as well. So let's take a look at Haiku. We can see that there's some errors in there. So we're gonna pull up our browser tab in here and there's errors in here. At browser, go through the changes that were made and fix these errors. You can use the console log and dev tools to do so. So now hopefully what Cursor or Haiku should be doing is going through the uh, browser on the right hand side and hopefully you should be able to see as well what it's doing. So you can see right now it's captured a screenshot. It's actually going ahead, taking screenshots of the tab and it's planning its next moves out, but it also has access to all the dev tools. So it should be seeing like all the things that are going wrong and hopefully this speeds up the process to deal with errors and bugs. So there you can see it just summarize the chat context. Go ahead and fix the changes that are stopping me from 
seeing my local host go through the console logs and dev tools. Let's see if it does it again. This is the realities of working within Cursor. You're gonna have issues like this, things are gonna pop up. Uh, when I integrated our app with the Superbase MCP, there were some problems there. So things are gonna happen. And this is just the realities of working with AI tools when you are coding. So you can see the changes that were made here. The app is now running and wow. So if we go into the app here, the changes that were made are working now and we can actually select different genres or filters that we want. We could choose all of them. I like this a lot better and just don't like the colors, but this is, this is pretty cool. It's actually a cool implementation of what we had before. Hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea and understanding of what is new with Cursor 2.0. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. I'm going to be using this a lot more to try and get a more in-depth understanding and we can go through Cursor 2.0 or who knows what's next in more detail. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly get this video out there to show everyone what is new with Cursor 2.0. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. I'm going to be using this a lot more in the next few days and weeks um, upcoming so we can go into more depth and projects down below as well. Uh, as always, like and subscribe do all that cool stuff. And if you wanna check out projects, check out the link in the description down below for a bunch of projects that you can add to your resume. Peace out.